All right, in this video, we're gonna be doing our knee range of motion testing, starting with the active range of motion as always, and then we'll follow up through passive and recent range of motion. So I will ask my client to basically do the range of motions for me. Uh, could you please bring your heel all the way to your glutes? And that will be knee flexion. And then please bring it back down and lock your knee for me. And that will be extension of the knee. And now, please bend your knee again, plant your, I'll literally show you that I would like you to do. Hold your foot like this, okay? And the knee is bent this way. Now I would like to rotate your big toe to the center right here, okay? And that will be internal rotation of the knee. And then we're going to follow through this way and external rotation of the knee. Now the bony landmark that I usually follow that makes it much easier is actually the tibial tuberosity because that's the one that will go back and forth. Now I would like you to point out that I would like to point out actually that there is a, a mechanism in the knee that it's not that visible for knee to actually show internal and external rotation because when the patient does flexion and extension, knee medial and lateral rotation is happening at the same time. So I don't expect to see, observe much of the medial and lateral rotation when the patient is doing. And then it will actually conclude the entire active range of motion of the knee because the knee does only four motions, primarily does flexion and extension and secondary does medial and lateral rotation. But this foot is very, very important and it will actually stabilize the ankle. So when the patient does medial rotation, try not to watch the foot so much, look at the tibial tuberosity. When they move to the lateral rotation, again, look at the tibial tuberosity. If it helps, you can actually put your finger lightly in there and follow through it just for a point of reference. Otherwise, foot will throw you off because it moves way more into in inversions and eversions that the ankle does, okay? And that will completely, uh, that will complete the uh, active range of motion of the knee. We're going to proceed to the passive range of motion of the knee. Okay, now we're going to continue our assessment of the knee range of motion testing with passive range of motion. It's very simple, actually, because we're going to follow exactly the same movements of the AROM of the knee. So because it's passive range of motion, I'm gonna ask my client to relax as much as possible, please. And I'll take the knee and foot, drag it all the way, and, and feel at this point when I do passive pressure is usually tissue approximation. Now you might have a very much so tissue stretch from the quads, depends on the tight quads. But normally in most cases, you're looking at the most normal tissue approximation would be the end feel. And after that, we are looking at knee extension. Now, definitely be more careful with the knee extension here because you won't really see much of a motion. It's usually about 10 degrees of extension. So it's very limited. So this is what we're looking at. And one of the common mistakes is a full identical comparison to elbow. When it comes to elbow extension, we're actually looking at a bone on bone and feel. It's a very much so abrupt stuff. When it comes to knee, it's actually it's tissue stretch and feel. It's not bone on bone. It's a very common mistake, very common assumption. You can actually feel when you put on an extension and start going, there is still a little bit of a give. It's not as abrupt. So please be careful with that. If the person is already anatomically hypermobile, as the rule goes, we are not supposed to do passive or pressure. A lot of individuals have hyperextended knees, so hypermobile knees. So don't forget to exclude your passive pressure when that happens. And we're going to proceed again, as we did with the in internal rotation and external rotation of the knee. In this case, though, it's very helpful that the ankle, the heel is under your hand. That way you can actually move back and forth. Once you actually move the ankle like this, back and forth, please try not to stare at the ankle, just like the AROM, your focus position is actually tibial tuberosity. So have your finger on the tibial tuberosity, move the ankle, but stick with the visuals for tibial tuberosity. Inversion, sorry, internal rotation and external rotation. So the tibial tuberosity is moving back and forth. Tibial tuberosity is right now here with the rotation. You can probably see the dips changing from the tibial motion. But as I mentioned in the AROM, 
you're really not looking at a lot of motion because in the flexion and extension of the knee, internal and external rotation of the knee is already happening. And that will conclude our passive range of motion of the knee. Again, just four motions, flexion, extension, internal and external rotation, and tissue approximations, and mostly tissue stretch for the end feels. And we're gonna proceed with our wrist range of motion testing after. All right, we're going to continue our assessment of the knee range of motion testing with resisted range of motion. So in this case, we're going to stick with what we started at the A-ROM and P-ROM by simply doing flexion, extension, and then we have to do a quick adjustment because of a simple uh, percussion. But let's go with first with knee. Flexion is to be around roughly around 30 degrees, 25 to 30 degrees. So it's not a lot of degrees that we're talking about. So please don't do a 90 degrees knee flexion and then do resting range of motion. Stick with the open pack position. It's right here. And position of the, uh, my hand position has to be around the ankle because if I go high, then I'm actually going to start testing the um, hip extension. The goal is to check the knee flexion. So hand, other hand can stabilize on the quadriceps right here. I'm going to pull up. Don't let me move you, please hold. Five, four, three, two, one. And it's very simple motion and then you can move up right here. And I'm going to push down and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. And that was knee flexion and knee extension. Now in this case, technically we did internal and external rotation of the knee. However, it is actually dangerous and you might actually injure your client if you do a strong medial and lateral rotation of the knee on a wrist and range of motion. That's why we highly not recommend doing that. Instead, we are going to do an ankle range of motion testing add-on as a resistant component, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of wrist and range of motion of the ankle only. And the reason we actually do that is because just like the forearm of the uh, like wrist motion that we added, a lot of ankle movers, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, they actually come from the knee complex area. It actually is a good uh, diagnostic tool to include ankle motions to the knee examination. So in this case, we do the knee flexion and extension and then proceed with the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the ankle. And it's very simple, supporting the ankle, okay? And then I'm going to push down, so don't let me move you, and hold, five, four, three, two, one. And please pay attention, I'm on the metatarsals, I'm not on the interphalanges here, right here, I'm not pushing on the toes, I'm pushing on the metatarsal right here, checking for dorsiflexion. And I'm going to put my hand right here, and now I'm going to ask the client to hold five, four, three, two, one. Now this was plantar flexion, that was dorsiflexion. Now also, hand position is also very important for your own health. Make sure that you're not actually doing a fist because if you make a mistake and slide, you might you know, injure your own ligaments. So have a good stance and I would definitely recommend a good uh, biomechanics and use your entire body weight to lock yourself in and a good push because gastro and soleus and all other posterior leg muscles tend to be quite strong for a lot of people. So you're going to be uh, fighting a lot of power here. So make sure that your position is very important, uh, very stable. So we have knee flexion extension and ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion for the knee resistant range of motion. And that will complete the entire knee range of motion testing.